Welcome, good afternoon everyone. Joining in to the Texas Sea Grant 2018-2020 Research Awardee Information Webinar. This is the second year we've done this presentation and we hope that this will be a useful tool for you. And uh, I will be leading off the presentation as, as I go into the research information necessary for you to uh, ensure your success on your project for the next two years. Uh, Dr. Pamela Plotkin, Director of Texas Sea Grant, is attending, and Cindy Powell, our Assistant Director for Communications, will take up the end of the webinar where she will go over the actual publication, reporting, and communications content of the webinar. So first of all, we are uh, recording the webinar and once uh, we're through with the webinar and we have the recording uh, put together how we would like it for audio and visual purposes, we will upload that to our Texas Sea Grant website. Um, so it will be made publicly available to you and to any of your co-PIs or your business administrators who might want to look at it and reference it as well. The Zoom meeting, uh, it allows you to uh, type in your questions, but we're asking you to please save your questions for after the research awardee information presentation. There'll be plenty of time to go over your questions and provide you answers, and Dr. Plotkin may be able to even assist a little bit on her extensive knowledge on, on uh, awards with Texas Sea Grant, but primarily I will be uh, answering your questions, and we can always augment those uh, subsequent to the webinar with one-on-one -on -one questions as well. Uh, to ask a question, uh, for those of you who haven't used Zoom meeting before, you simply click on the, ch the chat tab and then proceed with typing your question or copying and pasting it. Our Texas Sea Grant research support for the next two years, we are welcoming seven awards and we're very excited to have this partnership with uh, institutions across the state of Texas. Uh, Texas Sea Grant is funded uh, by NOAA, and our obligation to NOAA is to turn around and, and take our funds and support researchers across the state of Texas, anywhere from 45 to 50 percent of our awarded funds. And so we do that, as you well know, through our biennial research competition. And uh, the list here are the seven awards that were recommended through our omnibus proposal that we submitted uh, November 1. In 2017. Uh, these are the seven awards that we uh, selected that met our research priorities uh, to accomplish our strategic goals and strategic plan for Texas Sea Grant and for the National Sea Grant program. So I, I wanted to welcome Anna Armitage. She's with the Department of Marine Biology at Texas A&M University, Galveston. Uh, Amber Hardison, who's with University of Texas Marine Science Institute, and I think she's also joined by her co-PI, Dr. Zeng Fai Lei. Uh, we have uh, from our Department of Oceanography here at Texas A&M, Robert Hetland. And with our Department of Civil Engineering, we have at A&M, uh, Dr. Ali Mustavi. Uh, we have at Corpus Christi, uh, two different awards, one to Jennifer Pollock and one to John Scarpa. And then finally, we have our award with our Texas A&M University College of Architecture Department of Landscape Architecture and Urban Planning. The head of that department, PI, is Shannon Van Zandt. We welcome you. We're excited about your research projects, and we hope that uh, it will be an exciting two years for you as you work with your, with your uh, priorities and your timeline and, and the work that you'll be doing on your uh, project. 
uh, and we want to again have this webinar uh, be a useful tool to provide you information that will help make your success over the next couple of years. So all of our uh, awardees that are funded by Texas Sea Grant, uh, responsibilities and management to ensure success of the life of your project, the topics that we will be covering today uh, are budget, budgeting issues, post-award uh, issues, uh, reporting requirements, and other issues. Uh, the budget, you want to uh, look at your, your expenses that you've, that you've planned in your proposal and, and spend according to your budget and invoice processing related to that. Uh, any post-award revisions that you may have, that you may run into. Uh, the third point we're going to cover in, in pretty much uh, more detail because uh, that is an important consideration for uh, Texas Sea Grant awardees as we, uh, as a part of the uh, NOAA National Sea Grant Program, our responsibilities to our sponsor is to report on our results and how we are meeting our strategic plan. And so this is, it includes specific types of metrics, metrics and different types of measures of your performance that is required uh, specifically for what, what we have to uh, report on to our sponsor, NOAA, on an annual basis. And I, I know uh, most of you all who have received awards from different sponsors, whether it's NIH or NSF or USDA, uh, there typically are required requirements for annual reporting, but we want to walk you through the reporting requirements and give you an overview of what you would be reporting on, what and why you would be reporting on and when so that we can uh, re successfully report on your accomplishments and then we can successfully report as a state sea grant program to our sponsor. And then lastly, other issues and considerations for discussion. The first topic, your, your budgeting, expense, and invoice processing. Uh, the, the budget that you outlined in your proposal per your scope of work, your timeline, your budget and budget justification. Spend according to, to what you've outlined. And uh, that probably seems like an obvious thing to do, but uh, it, it's important to us and we want you to be successful in your work and, and it's important for your sponsor program's office to uh, invoice us on a, on a timely basis. Uh, all of the invoices are submitted to me and I, I review and, and compare how you're doing on your timeline as you submit your uh, expenses and invoices for processing. I review the, the budget versus actuals prior to approval. Uh, most importantly, let me know of any expense questions that you may have so I can facilitate on your behalf with your business administrator or with your sponsored programs office. I want to establish a good working rapport with your partners and your partners can be not only, of course, your co-PIs uh, or your business administrators or your sponsored programs office, but as well as any subcontracts that you may have on your project that you are uh, have, have uh, invoicing based on their budget. So it, it's a team approach and I, I like to look at it from that point of view and, and want uh, that to be hopefully pretty seamless for you. The, award, the awards that are uh, funded to Texas a and University system agencies, depending on what agency, where you were located, uh, the invoicing would all be separate uh, through sponsored research services, whereas some of the awardees, for example, uh, Alley in civil engineering, he's, he's within the same departmental structure uh, 
at TEMU as TEMU Texas Sea Green is. And so all of his invoicing will just be processed and, and posted through Maestro and I will monitor that. There would not be any formal um, invoice submission to me in that regard. Our sponsored research services um, department manages that for us. Whereas other agencies, for example, TAMU Corpus Christi and Galveston, they are their own entity and they would have their own invoice processing through their sponsored research programs division, which then would come over to TAMU. And Amber at University of Houston uh, and, and Zang Fay, we have uh, a really good rapport with the sponsored programs office there with some current and prior awards that we have. Um, I did want to show you uh, and this isn't really pretty, but I've developed this invoice template where it shows an overview, the invoice summary of your original budget, a current billing on an invoice, then your cumulative expenditures from the, from the inception, and then your balance of your budget available as each monthly or quarterly invoice gets processed. And, our sponsored programs office with Maestro shows this in the system, but a, a lot of the, the true sub-awards like with U of H or TNU Corpus Christi, when they send their invoice to uh, us to be processed, I'm now having this form uh, as a cover sheet invo invoice summary so that you can see a snapshot of all the activity that's going on in the end. The business administrator can drop in the numbers there, show the cost share. Um, and I've, I'll be including this in our uh, project award uh, agreements that will be drawn up between both institutions. So. And I'll, I'll work with your business administrator, uh, your sp sponsored programs office to, to work on that uh, little template. But it's, I just wanted to show it to you. Don't worry about it at this point. Um, so again, let me know of, of any expense questions uh, that you may have. Uh, you may run across uh, where you may have to add to your budget or move expenses around based on what's happening to your um, to your project, but just know that I'm here to, to kind of make it smoother for you, facilitate that process. Cost share reporting is required uh, when your federal funds are spent. So again, if you have any questions there, you can have your business administrator contact me and I'll facilitate with our sponsored research services team. For every two dollars of federal funds that you receive, you then have to report a dollar cost share. If you remember the proposal requirement was 50% cost share for every uh, federal funds request of your budget. And so as the invoices are processed, it would also have cost share reporting on that invoice. And again, those A&M PIs uh, locally, that would all be handled automatically in Maestro. Second, secondly, the, the topic I wanted to talk to you about are uh, post-award revisions for your project. Uh, <laughs> kind of funny, but, it, but it's not. I mean, it, your, your post-award revision, it's not encouraged. Uh, we, we want you to look at your proposed project and spend and work accordingly. But life is life. Things happen. Hurricanes happen. So... Uh, we we uh, uh, are, are understanding the the world, the real world out there, and and uh, again, I'm I want to just make things as easy as I can for you, and just uh, giving you an outline of if you do have a post award re uh, revision, the different type of revisions uh, that that might occur. We would just want you to submit. A written justification and for for my review and approval and the different types of uh, revision requests might be a 
scope of work change with or without a budget revision, for example, the hurricane prevented the ability to, for you to perform sampling. So that may have you know, in, interrupted your, your timeline and you would need to, to change your scope of work uh, to, to uh, make the, the project work for how you had originally intended and, and what you now need to do to keep that scope of work going. Uh, there may be a budget revision with no change in scope of work. For example, you may feel like you, you need to have more analysis that's required. Um, so a, a budget revision might reflect where you would increase your, your professional services, where the analysis would be performed at a, at a lab off-site, uh, and we would want to move budget from another category that you would no longer need and offset it, increase professional services, and then perhaps uh, offset your other budget category to uh, retain your, your budget to make sure it balances out so that the, all of the totals remain the same. So uh, again, you would uh, submit a written justification with your original budget, uh, your, your requested budget revision, your purpose or justification for the, the change in the budget, and, and then um, I would review that. Another type of revision would be if a principal investigator changes, uh, that the PI moves, we would, we would facilitate that process for you in working with your sponsor program's office to get that done. Uh, there could be a no-cost extension, for example, Late initial funding on, on an award. We are um, uh, currently awaiting our notification for our omnibus, which starts February 1 fiscal year of 2018, as does your project. And as we're waiting on the award announcement and the timing of the Office of Management Budget sending funds to the Department of Commerce, and NOAA, who then send it to the National Sea Grant Office, who then sends it to the Texas Sea Grant Office, who then funds your institution, there can be a time lag. And so we're, in an, and also in this environment of government shutdowns and, and spending resolutions and, and that sort of thing, uh, we, we are in constant contact with our National Sea Grant Office uh, for them to advise us as to when our award will be uh, on its way and at that point we will advise you all uh, as, as to that occurring. Um, I'm, I'm sure most of you all have heard of interim account funding and uh, sometimes it's, it's prudent to start coordinating with your sponsor programs office to give them a heads up that you've got an award that you're anticipating uh, and they would have uh, uh, guidelines as to what the minimum amount could be that you could set up for interim funding. Uh, again, I would assist in that regard too. Um, and uh, especially the, all, all seven of our awards will be um, uh, assisted with our TAMU, Texas Sea Grant uh, SRS project administrator uh, in setting up budgets for you all and getting agreements uh, started for negotiations and, and uh, signatures. And so that will all have a little bit of a timing uh, basis there and, and we will continue to monitor and keep in touch with you to let you know uh, once we know further. Um, again, as on requesting a revision, uh, submit uh, a budget summary, your original budget, cumulative spending and balance, uh, and then a justification of the purpose and need of your revision and submit it to me. And my, my whole point is, again, I want to make things easier for you. I may have questions and I want to understand your project. Uh, the more information that you can provide to me on justifying why you might have a change to a budget or a change on your on on a scope of work, the more I understand your needs, then 
the, the easier it's going to be and, and the most efficient way for us to to get that revision done for you. I, I have a, a finance degree from a and uh, and my background is also in financial reporting and, and budget analysis and then uh, worked with sponsored research services as a proposal administrator here at Texas A&M for many years before I came to work with Dr. Plotkin as the research coordinator in June of 2015. Um, but I'm not a scientist. I'm a daughter of a scientist, but but just the so the nature uh, that I of, of of my personality is I'm I am very inquisitive and I I want to understand things. So uh, don't don't be uh, don't don't be hesitant if if I inquire further if I'm not understanding something and I inquire further for a justification for a revision. Just me understanding and you helping me understand your, your needs and your project will make everything uh, uh, smoother in that regard. And then the next uh, area that I'd like to talk about is reporting, but just to give you an idea for understanding your project, your work that you're going to be doing on your on your awarded project, the results of your work require reporting of those outcomes of those results. And that ties into the overarching goals of the Texas Sea Grants Research Program, which is to support outcome-oriented research in order to make research investments uh, that will generate substantial impacts in Texas. And so the, as you know, when, when we wrote our request for proposals, one of the things we really wanted, wanted the PIs to focus on was not only their research and their outcomes, but how can it then be applied to and be integrated with extension and, and education and outreach. Uh, you know, again, NOAA funds Texas Sea Grant. We fund researchers across the state of Texas for the benefit of Texas and Texans. And so uh, as you perform your work and we ask for you to report on your results on an annual basis, we want to be able to do that such that our investment that we can report on substantial uh, positive impacts to Texas. Um, we would want you to report on your outcomes and your accomplishments of your work. We would then want you to report further how those accomplishments evolve into becoming a measured impact to Texas and Texans. For example, how many communities have begun using your technological tool? How has that had a, had a measurable impact on, say, improving a, res a community to be more resilient? So those are those are the things that in our overarching goals of our research program is to ensure that your, your work is then reported on and uh, so that we can meet our strategic plan objectives and report on those objectives. So the, the section, the third section on, on our reporting requirements, the what, why, and when of reporting. As most awards with any sponsor, you have annual uh, uh, progress reports. Uh, we also, of course, then would have a final progress report. All of the Texas Sea Grant awarded principal investigators are required to report on the progress of their project and provide other information that Texas Sea Grant, as I mentioned previously, we are required to report to our sponsor, NOAA, and that allows the measuring of Texas Sea Grant's funded research outcomes to our annual strategic plan. And the, the outcomes can be translated into three different areas. One, metrics and measures, of your performance, two, reportable accomplishments and impacts of your research, and then three, publications, which would include a Texas Sea Grant acknowledgement statement, 
of the source of funding. Uh, we would want you to, on an annual basis throughout your year, not just at the not just at the due date of of, a, of an annual report, but as uh, publications are are developed and presented, whether it's a peer-reviewed journal or a poster presentation, we would want you to submit digital copies of these, both during and post-award, to me. And uh, the publications uh, reporting and communication section, as I mentioned earlier on, will be further dis discussed by our Texas Sea Grant Assistant Director for Communications, Cindy Powell. And then our, our so what is, we're doing the, the annual project reports annually on an annual basis. Why? Because we have to report to our sponsor. So you're reporting to you, to your sponsor, Texas Sea Grant, and we in turn report those results to our sponsor, NOAA. And when we ask for our reports on an annual basis at the end of October, and then 30 days after expiration. Uh, NOAA's fiscal year is February 1 through January 31. Yet our, our National Sea Grant Office reports at the end of November of every year. So our, uh, our uh, research reports that we re request from you, I have descriptions in each of the templates that would have you report from November 1 through October 31 of that particular, particular year. The guidelines on how to report, our office will issue an annual call to report and we'll provide a reporting template for your completion. So it's a, a Word document. And uh, I ask for you to, uh, I'll send out the templates uh, usually a month or so before the due date and ask for you to return it by email by the end of October. Later in the year, we will transition to the Electronic Proposal and Reporting System Application EC Grant, of which you all had wonderful <laughs> experiences as it, was, as it was first being implemented and, and we were uh, trying to learn how to use the system as the system was uh, getting turned on uh, to the different C Grant programs that, that utilize the EC Grant uh, application system. And so we will eventually be reporting on the same metrics and measures that you will be reporting on in your reporting uh, Word doc template, we will eventually transition uh, your project onto the EC Grant uh, uh, system by promoting your proposal to a project and then having you uh, log in and, and do your reports uh, from that point. But right now, we will just have you use our, our Word doc so that you can become familiar with the content of the of the progress uh, template, and we'll be familiar with what is typically required on on those reports. Please expect follow up reporting post expiration of your award to report your future successes and results in publications. Um, you know, peer review publications I know a lot of times occur after uh, the project has ended. Uh, but there are other successes that you can report on. For example, you may have a student who uh, becomes gainfully employed in a position related to their degree. And uh, within a couple of years of graduating, that is a specific metric that we would want to report on. So uh, we will continue to stay in touch with you throughout the life of your award and post award. Now I want to take you to our Texas Sea Grant webpage to show you the reporting template and where to go to get that. And also on our Texas Sea Grant webpage, there are uh, guidelines summarized as well as a, a, uh, an instructions document 
that provides much more detail for you on how, on how to complete the template. So I hope those of you who are now awardees <laughs> are familiar with our Sea Grant website. Um, in order to go to the reporting section for awards, uh, if you go to funding, it then gives research opportunities for both researchers and students, but at, under the research funding opportunity section, at the lower section, uh, Texas Sea Grant Award Reporting will take you to the overview on how the principal investigator for each of the Texas Sea Grant Awards has an obligation to report, and it basically gives a summary of what I've been talking to you about. Um, the template is here and further instructions, detail instructions in the middle of the page at this link will open up an instructions document. This web page gives further instructions on publications uh, and it's just a great resource. Uh, for you here summarized um, and it even it shows where you would be um, uh, per definitions from the National Sea Grant Office what a particular publication is. Uh, it's not just a, a peer-reviewed journal, it, it's a student's thesis, it's a poster presentation and again Cindy will go into more detail on that. <clears throat> Excuse me, but um, click on the link here for the guidelines not not for us to go into too much detail here because I've probably already overwhelmed you somewhat but this is again just summarizing that the requirements for, for reporting the annual components of our um, of our research award progress template that you would be completing um, And then it goes into more, more definitions, more detailed on the types of reporting that is required, uh, different links for getting additional information on how to uh, re report on different activities on your project. So there is that resource for you. And then the template itself, and I know a couple of our couple three or four of our new awardees are, are familiar with this template. If I can get this to show up, okay. Uh, primarily we look at reporting metrics and measures which starts out in this, this first section. You identify your, your project, PI, the title, your focus area, um, whether it was um, resilient communities or education, healthy coastal ecosystems, educational workforce development would be put into this area here. Uh, the different Things that we would be looking for you to report are your collaborators, your project partners listed there, your publications reporting. We ask for you to submit a digital copy, as I mentioned earlier, not just on an annual basis, but as soon as, as, soon as something gets published online, uh, that you know we can get that document downloaded and provide us that digital copy. As I mentioned earlier, NOAA's fiscal year is February 1 through January 31. And so uh, if you have a publication that uh, gets published and printed uh, before February 1, we would include that in our prior year annual reporting. So uh, as, as you are able to accomplish different types of publications, whether it's a poster presentation or a student's thesis or dissertation, Send those to me as, as you accomplish those. And then we have an, an acknowledgement statement that I've, I've typed here. 
that typically would go on your publication. Uh, once we are notified from the National Sea Grant Office and NOAA of our new 2018 award, then we'll know what the new award number will be. Um, the logo information, you can click on that and it will take you to uh, where we would like for you to please use the Sea Grant at Texas A&M University logo, at Texas A&M logo. And, and just, again, I don't want to go into too much detail, but, but the, the text boxes are provided for you to, to uh, detail the information as we've requested it for you, because we then extract this information and report on it on our annual report to our sponsor. So each of the specific uh, items here that we've asked you to report on, there, there is a reason for it. So that it, we felt like this template would give you not only a definition, but places for you specifically to report on it, and, and then we're able to extract that information. Other metrics reporting, uh, volunteer activities, students, the students that are helping you on your project, wh whether they're new or continuing or graduating. We want all of that information, in particular their email, because we like to keep in contact with the students at, throughout the year and, and uh, afterwards. Students that have, as I mentioned, that have graduated and are employed in a job related to their degree field within two years of graduation. That's a specific performance measure that we report to our sponsor. And that doesn't necessarily have to be just traditional employment. It can be a fellowship, uh, internships. So again, we try to, to give you the information so that it's pretty easy for you to just drop it into each of these text boxes. You may have uh, events and activities that you and or your students helped organize or that you actively participated in during the reporting period. Again, just drop in the information. Let us know if it's a Sea Grant sponsored event or not, the number of attendees. Sometimes that's hard to identify, but, but we really do need that information more uh, different types of program measures and reporting, uh, fishermen, seafood processors, aquaculture industry personnel who modify their practices using the knowledge gained as a result of that sea grant activity. So all of these different sections gives you the definition and then the, the place where you can uh, drop in that information. Number of acres restored, I mean that's, uh, significant information we want to report. One section here that I wanted to highlight, there may be an informal education program that resulted from the project during the current reporting period uh, where you may have conducted a workshop, would want the location and date, and not only the number of attendees, but the people who are actually engaged in, in that uh, program. And this just this goes on. Uh, another section uh, that we report on is the funding that you may have been able to leverage from other sources as a result of you being funded by Texas Sea Grant. Um, and that is information that we then report to us, our sponsor. I'm going to switch back to the PowerPoint because the next section on reporting uh, covers statements of your accomplishments and impacts of the work done on your, as a result of your Texas Sea Grant project. Uh, the accomplishment and impact statements are succinct narratives of the results of your year-long research effort. And there, there are differences between what an accomplishment statement is versus an impact statement. Uh, accomplishments are activities that are conducted 
without emphasis on evaluating the effectiveness of the activities. It may not be measured yet. Um, they're, they're current activities, they're ongoing activities that you're reporting on. Um, they're distinct from an impact statement because they're ongoing or have otherwise not been measured or evaluated as yet for their significance. Whereas impacts are the results of activities that have been measured and have a significant economic, societal, and or environmental benefit. And through your award timeline and even post-award, as we follow up with you with follow-up reporting, some of those ongoing activities and accomplishments may, so to speak, grow up to become impact statements. So what, what we do, what we ask for you to do is, uh, at the end of each of the progress reports, and I'm going to pull that up again, Towards the end of the progress report, we have a section for accomplishment statements or impact statements. And it gives a, a definition. Here are further links to the NOAA Sea Grant website that gives further definitions and even examples of uh, in writing accomplishment statements and in, in impact statements. And so what we've done is we ask you to please characterize and summarize in a language that a lay audience can understand any of the accomplishments or impacts that have resulted from this Sea Grant funded project during the re reporting period. So it's kind of like a, a news, newspaper headline. Uh, and we have a, a section per page of these blank text boxes where you can type whether it's an accomplishment or impact statement type the sections in these text boxes, and then there's another page um, if you have more than one and or uh, you or have an impact versus an accomplishment statement. Um, so that particular template where there, the text boxes of a partner, a title, relevance, response, results, recap, what we're wanting you to do is Give us that succinct statement of that accomplishment, that ongoing activity. In the sections that had the text boxes, you'd have a, a title and use a present tense, including Texas Sea Grant in the title. And I'll have a couple examples for you in a minute. Uh, a primary and or secondary focus area, we'd want you to list that from your proposal the program partners, your collaborators. And then when you are actually writing the statement, consider the four R's and it's kind of like, you know, who, what, when, where, and why. <laughs> so the four R's for writing an accomplishment statement or an impact statement would be to first write a relevance statement. Why? Why did you do this research? Why should this be considered important to others? And you can maybe take that from your relevance statement from your proposal. And then the next R would be a response portion of that statement. The what of that statement. What research did you do in response to the need of your proposal outlined in the relevance? And then your results or outcome statement. And it separates the accomplishment, the, the research that has been produced, the data, and it, it separates that from the impact, which how as a result of your research and producing data, how did the world change as a result of that research? And then a, a brief recap summary statement, 500 characters. So the, the research, accomplishment or impact statement that we would like for you to report to us in the annual template would be that those sections that I've gone over put into these text boxes and just um, overall it's 250 words for each section. 
And to give you an example uh, of an accomplishment statement, we have one from one of our uh, Texas Sea Grant sponsored researchers who was modeling uh, the impact of the hurricane on uh, one of the Texas barrier islands. Uh, he has his primary and his second, and he also has secondary focus area to his project. He had uh, his program partners were Texas A&M University at Galveston and Texas General Land Office. And his relevance statement portion of his accomplishment statement, the relevance was that that island is a barrier island. It's vulnerable to uh, storms. And in his, his research, he talked about Hurricane Ike. The island protects the coastal resources. And so that's the why. And so what he did in response to that why is he then stated his response statement. They synthesized historical data. They conducted scans. They measured. And then the results were model simulations that were clearly, clearly reproduced, showing details of the erosion to the dune. And it was a great, rare example of successful modeling of, of the barrier island and the dynamics that occur during a severe storm. So the, the, the why, relevance, the what did they do, the results statement, and then simply a recap. And this is, again, kind of like looking at a headline on the front page, the upper fold of, of a newspaper. And I'm stressing these statements because we then, as your sponsor, are required to report and select uh, good accomplishment and impact statements uh, that show the outcomes and results of our funding you, and we report that to our sponsor. An impact statement example where the ongoing activity then becomes uh, measurable uh, to, to how did the world change as a result of that ongoing accomplishment of that activity. It's now an impact uh, statement. This particular PI, uh, he had a shrimp culture research project uh, and his, his impact statement was that as a result of being funded by Texas Sea Grant, this research project had an estimated $10 million economic impact on industry. Uh, his primary focus and secondary focus area is listed. He has his collaborating program partners listed, his relevance, response, results, and recap. So his relevance as the world's population grows, aquaculture plays a greater role in meeting demands for seafood. Uh, his particular shrimp aquaculture program could result in a cost-effective seafood production while decreasing environmental footprint. So that would be the why, and so what did he do? Well, as a result of Texas Sea Grant funded research, his response statement is stating that he developed and piloted a new technology to culture shrimp. Uh, properly managed, a properly managed technique that could increase production and reduce the cost of the shrimp mariculture. So as results from the project for this particular reporting period for that particular year, he had a couple of businesses that he was able to specifically measure in Florida and one in Texas that used that tool, it used that, that production regimen and they were able to report to him uh, three businesses that were sustained and with a measurable economic benefit. He was able to report to us, and you really have to report and justify and document these measures. So that, that's very important too, at not, not just a high level. This is what the benefit could have been or what they say it was, but we would have to have documentation support from that business uh, for, for documenting that economic benefit. They had jobs that were sustained, they had jobs that were created, combined labor and in, income economic impact, uh, and then his overall recap. As a result of Texas Sea Grant funded research, they developed and pioneered 
a technique. So I, I think you, you get the idea, but the accomplishment, accomplishment statement is the first item. And then as, as that ongoing project is, becomes mature and is able to measure the results and impacts, then we ask you to add that impact statement to the section of your annual report. And lastly, on the annual report template, there's a section that NOAA likes for you to uh, complete. They, they ask you what your overall goal and objective was, and then the outcome during the period, what impacts or roadblocks that, that occurred during the year. We had another hurricane hit. <laughs> So as a result of that change or problem, what, what, were your, what are your next steps that you're hoping to do for the next reporting period? So that's our template. And the last area for your research award project other issues or considerations, most importantly, contact me. I, that's what I'm here for. I will assist you with any of your questions or issues. If on the administration of your new award, I will facilitate and obtain answers on your behalf with your sponsored programs office, with our sponsored programs office. If I don't have the answer, I'll get it for you and just be patient <laughs> and we'll just work together as a team. Uh, another area that, two, two areas that I wanted to uh, give you an, an overview of, uh, sponsored research reporting requirements, uh, the Texas A&M University System Memorandum in conjunction with a Texas House Bill and the Texas Education Code, basically stating <clears throat> that any PI of, of Texas A&M University and thereby subawards. So the and and whether it's our award, your award, your subcontract award, any any documentation or, uh, of uh, the communication that's that's made in public regarding the uh, the research on your project, they want a conspicuous disclosure of the identity of each sponsor. So clear, clear, uh, clear definition of, or clear, uh, clearly visible. They want the name of the sponsor of that research in any public com communication of the results, the data that was generated in the performance of that research that was sponsored by outside funds. And that particular document is this, and these documents, the template, our instructions, our webinar PowerPoint, I will provide all of these documents for you. Um, and I'll send in a zip file so it would be convenient for you to have, and we'll also upload these to our, to our website. But this is the, the A&M House Bill, Texas Education Code, and the A&M System uh, uh, instructions for any faculty member who conduct or participate in sponsored research must disclose the identity of each sponsor. So that's, that's that document. The second one is NOAA's data sharing directive, which ensures that environmental data produced as a result of your NOAA funded grant, thereby subrecipients, Texas Sea Grant and our awards to you as well as your sub recipients on your proposal budget, uh, that the results, the data pr produced as a result of those funded grants are made publicly accessible in a timely fashion, typically within two years. Final manuscripts of peer reviewed journals are deposited with our uh, NOAA Central Library. And that document is this one from the Department of Commerce. NOAA Transmittal of Data Public Sharing Directive for all funded grants, contracts and grants. Okay. 
So next uh, are questions. Uh, if you have any on uh, the research information on, on the award, uh, I will take those now. And you can just click on chat and type your questions. So the first question is, will we have individual accounts on Maestro for each project? When would you expect the project accounts to be set up? Um, thank you for that question. That goes back to where I had talked about um, our funding coming from NOAA and the National Sea Grant Office from the Office of Management and Budget. Once we are, are, are given notification, of our award funds coming in, we will let you know and we will be in contact with our sponsored programs office to start to set up an award and, and a contract to be drawn up and negotiated between, uh, between institutions. Now those PIs who are within Texas A&M University College Station in Galveston, uh, the award will be uh, within Maestro, and your accounts will actually be a support account under our own award account. And so once those get set up, we, we will advise you. Um, and it, I mean, timing could be, I mean, realistically, two, two to three weeks uh, on, on the long end especially with those institutions that are outside of Texas A&M University. Um, and that would be why it would be advantageous to get uh, with your sponsor programs office to let them know that you'll be receiving award funds soon and to perhaps get the wheels in motion to have an interim account set up. Now for Texas A&M University College Station in Galveston, located uh, PIs, we all work with the same sponsored programs office and our project administrator will assist me in helping set up your interim accounts if, if we have to do that. I mean, we may not need to depending on when we're, we're depending on when, when it gets announced to us that we will be receiving our award funds. Another question is, if there is a delay in getting award and getting funds set up, would, would it still be a good idea to try and get bridge funding in order to get things started? Absolutely, and I think I just answered the question. I hope um, that yes, the bridge funding or interim funding um, account would would be a good idea to go ahead and get, get that started um, and communicated with your business administrator and at the same time, we will be facilitating that with our project administrator here at Sponsored Research Services. Are there any other questions before I turn the presentation over to Cindy Powell? If there, if there are no further questions, then our Discussion will now cover publications, reporting, and communications. And Cindy Powell, our Assistant Director for Texas Sea Grant for Communications, will be our next presenter. Thank you all. Hello, everyone. My name is Cindy Powell, and I'm the Assistant Director of Texas Sea Grant. I'll be discussing publications, reporting, and other communications topics. We're running a little long, so I'll try to keep this as short as possible. Um, here is the contact information for the communications staff here at Texas Sea Grants, myself as assistant director, and then Alex Hood, our communications aide, who is also facilitating our webinar today. First, let's take a look at publications reporting, what we here at Texas Sea Grant need, and some context about why we need it. Um, what we, what, uh, how we define a publication for the purposes of reporting to our national office. Um, this is just something that I've come up with that kind of boils, distills it down to, it's intended to educate or inform, and it's publicly available. So, for example, 
a flyer announcing a presentation wouldn't be included and neither would something that includes confidential information that we can't share with the public. When you make a presentation at a conference, and this is kind of a special case, the PowerPoint from your presentation would not be considered a publication because it's not complete. The people in the audience receive more information during your presentation than what's in the PowerPoint. But if your presentation was also recorded as audio or video, and that thus it captures what you said, or if there are proceedings from the conference, then that would be complete and we would need you to please submit that. There are three types of publications you and the students supported by your grant are most likely to have. You have peer-reviewed journal articles, theses and dissertations, and poster presentations. And then there are also other types of publications and I've received several of these different types from researchers in the past. Your project may not necessarily have any of these that are listed in that first bullet, but if you do, we need them. And on the second bullet, the National Sea Grant Library lists, has a comprehensive list um, at the URL listed of the types of publications that, that we need to collect. Mia has already mentioned the acknowledgement statement, and I'm just going to throw it up here again for you in slightly larger print. When we have the omnibus award number from the, uh, from the national folks, we can go ahead and replace those pound signs, but that's basically the format for the acknowledgement statement. And then also for cataloging purposes, we put Texas Sea Grant publications and numbers on all of our publications except journal articles and theses and dissertations. Um, if you have some of those types of publications that are beyond those exceptions, uh, you would need to contact me and I would go ahead and issue the number based on the type of publication it is. And just there's an example of a format for that. Our logos are available on our website, and that third bullet explains where you can find that on our website. We would like you to use both our logo and the NOAA logo, and again, the exception is journal articles and theses dissertations. Next slide. We would prefer that you submit your publications as soon as they are published. Um, if that's not going to be possible, you can also include them with your progress report and your final reports. But as Mia pointed out, your progress reports due October 31st, but our year doesn't actually end until January 31st. So we would also need you to report anything that was published during that three month period. And we would need those by March 1st in order to meet our deadlines to the national office. Um, it's especially important that you submit these because one of the metrics the National Office uses to score our success as a program is the number and quality of the publications that are produced. So it's very important that you send those in. And please remember to send us any articles, theses, dissertations, or other publications from your project that are published after your project is over. Uh, as Mia also has already mentioned, um, you need to submit these directly to her, and I want to give a little additional information on what to include with it. Um, if it's not already included in the document, the title, the authors, and an abstract, the date of the publication, and if it's a poster, the conference, and the location of the conference. And also, if it was distributed to anyone in printed form, and we're not including the poster presentations in that, obviously, please also mail five hard copies to Mia. I will point out that we need to know date of month and year, and not just year, because January is the, the spoiler month, and if you could say something came out in 2018, well, if it came out in January 2018, we need to report it with everything else that happened in 2017. Publication, your publications are archived in a number of places, including the National Sea Grant Library at the University of Rhode Island, 
our, our own Texas Sea Grant website, and we have a collection of paper files here in the Sea Grant office. And here's just an example of what the National Sea Grant Library's online catalog looks like. As you can see, we have had, we currently have 669 peer-reviewed journal articles in the library at this time. And through these archives, our website and the Sea Grant Library, the public will have access to your publications. Most will be available as digital documents. The exceptions are going to be non-open source peer-reviewed articles because of the copyright issues involved there. And in those cases, the library will make available a 30-day loan copy if someone requests the article. And then a special note about theses and dissertations. I know some students will want to turn their, their work into an article for journal publication and they'll want to keep it private until then. Students can request that their theses or dissertations be embargoed for up to two years. But you need to specifically request that when, the, when you submit them to us. As I noted here, when we submit an embargoed document, the library will list the citation and abstract only, not the full document until after the embargo ends. And we will only list the citation on our website. And then the other side of this is sharing your research with a wider audience. We have two Texas Sea Grant periodicals. Sea Reads is an online newsletter that comes out twice a year. It's a roundup of recent publications. In particular, we include your peer review journal articles and we do short capsule summaries of those. Texas Shores, oh, well, here's an example of series to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. And then the other publication is Texas Shores, our general interest magazine. And it comes out annually. We have almost 6,000 subscribers and we distribute another couple thousand at various events. And we will typically have at least one and frequently more than one research story in each issue. So, uh, and, and just point out that the cover and the story that you're looking at right now is the issue that's gonna be out at the end of this week. And to let you know that you may be contacted by a communication staff member who would like to write a story about your project. And you may also be contacted by one of us about press releases and stories for our website. Um, once we've done a release, if you're a Texas A&M University researcher, we do distribution through the A&M Marketing and Communications Department. And if you're at another institution, we will work with your university's communications staff to get it out there. Your university may also use it in an online newsletter or post it to their website, and we've had our press releases posted to the National Sea Grant website as well. And social media is a growing component of our outreach to increase the visibility of both Texas Sea Grant and the work that you do. As we're contacting you, please remember to mention anything about your project that we might do a short encapsulated summary of in a post like this. Or if you're headed off to do field work, you could let us know. Those make really engaging social media posts. And as, you'll, as you saw in the previous slide, there is a nice photo of a student researcher releasing a tagged bull shark that one of his colleagues took. If you're able, please take photos while your project is in progress or contact us in advance, especially if you're going out in the field and we'll try to get a photographer out there with you. And finally, if your project is highlighted in the news media or posted somewhere by your institution on their website or wherever, please let us know. That's one of the goals of our communications effort to generate interest in science, especially Sea Grant funded science, and we post links to those things from our website so everyone can see them. And that is the end of my very, very sped up presentation. Uh, if you have any questions, please go ahead and do the chat thing. And my contact information in, is listed here if you have any questions that come up later. Okay, I have two questions. 
I'm going to do the easiest one first. Can we have a copy of these slides, please? Yes, these, the video will be posted on the website and the PowerPoint will be there. And if there's demand for it, we can also just go ahead and post the, the PowerPoint itself. That shouldn't be a problem. And how do you deal with copyright issues when archiving publications? Um, for something that's under copyright, we let people know that it exists, basically. And the National Sea Grant Library acts like a lending library in that case. They see the, the person who would like to read the publication can go on to their online catalog and see that it's available and make a request for it. And the library will loan it to them for, I think it's 30 days. That way we are not violating the journal's copyright or if it's a book, the book publisher's copyright. And, but at the same time, we're making the information available to the public. Are there any other questions? Well, I'm not seeing any additional questions, so I guess I'll say thank you. And I guess toss this back to Mia if she has any additional comments. Well, again, thank you very much for participating in this webinar. I hope uh, it has been informative for you. Uh, email me any other questions you might have. We'll post things to the website and uh, make this a, a seamless and successful award for you. Thank you again. Have a great day.